Hey, Big Yumbo here. Gonna do a little thrift haul for you. Sorry I haven't been around for a couple days. Uh, I did the seven videos in a row. And then, uh, I guess I just don't have great endurance. You know, I had to take a little break. Here's a good one. Their company's called Twillery. Their shirts don't do quite as well anymore, but their blazers. I've sold an identical blazer from Twillery for over a hundred bucks. I have another one in my store listed currently, which I believe has not sold, but here's another hundred to $150 blazer. It's like a performance stretchy material. Tailored for the hustle. Machine washable, four way stretch, cooling tech. And I actually got to throw this in the washing machine, which was great because it had some stains on it. Most places you can't do that. So I got to steam this one because it's kind of wrinkly. Here's a Patagonia jacket. This one is a women's. It is called the Alpine Houdini. It's like a very lightweight jacket. There's a similar lightweight jacket from Patagonia like this that is not very good. Can't remember what that one's called, but this is... One of their Houdini jackets, more specifically the Alpine Houdini, and there's only one listed and like five sold for women's uh, for like 60 bucks, 60, 70, something like that. I've sold the men's one and it sold super fast. Here it is, just a vintage t shirt that I got in a state sale. What is it? Green Bay versus Tampa Bay. I don't know, it's like a football shirt. It's from 98. Here's an Eaton shirt, Eton. I don't love this company that much, but um, if I find their shirts in more interesting patterns or colors, I will grab them. There was a ton of these at a local Goodwill the other day. There was like 10 at least. And uh, they all had staining on the collar, so I left them. But I went back like a day later and they were all gone, so somebody grabbed them all. So they can have fun trying to get the stains out. This one smells like cologne, even though I washed it. So I'm going to put that in the uh, description. Here we have a pair of Grimici shorts. The elastic waist is like completely blown out. I would still grab... Grimici shorts and pants, even if they're not in the best condition. If they're in great condition, they could be like 40 bucks. Here's a vintage starter crew neck sweatshirt. It's got a cool Budweiser logo on it. It's from the 1998 Super Bowl. Unfortunately, it's embroidered as opposed to like a big graphic print. Big graphic print would be better. Here is a pair of Lululemon, I think these ones are called the Discipline Pant. Unfortunately, we have a large kind of white discoloration, two stains, and a hole. Uh, if they were in perfect condition, probably like 40 bucks at least. These ones are my least favorite Lululemon pants because they always get this like staticky. Do you hear this? This weird staticky feel to them that uh, I hate. Here's a pair of Foot Joy pants. Most Foot Joy pants suck, including these ones. These ones were super cheap, that's why I grabbed them. Um, the ones you want are the athletic fit ones. Those ones sell way better than the regular ones. And I have to mention that I am doing a live stream with Caleb Sells on uh, Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, uh, jump in there for that if you want to ask me questions or whatever. Here's an L.O. Bean. This is a sun-washed canvas shirt. They do all right for like 20 bucks if you're lucky. The style of the shirt is sun-washed canvas. This hoodie is, what is it again? The Golfer's Journal. 
I have no idea what that is. It's got this big kind of shiny graphic on the back. I saw this in a Goodwill the other day. I saw two of them and I couldn't get my internet to work to see if it was good. It's, it feels really nice. It's like, I think it's 100% cotton. Yeah, it's 100% cotton made in Canada. It's like a nice heavy weight sweatshirt. Um, didn't have internet and I'm driving to the next Google and I, I had to stop what I, and I'm like, oh, I gotta look up if that was good or not. So I look it up and then they sell for like 50 bucks and I was like, shit. So I had to make the decision, am I gonna drive back to that Goodwill and go grab the other ones or drive to the next Goodwill that I already have over there. And I made the decision to keep moving and I got a bunch of good pants at the next spot, but fortunately one of the hoodies was still there a couple days later. And it should sell for about 50 bucks. Here's just a Lululemon metal vent tech shirt. You can usually tell because like it's got this weird um, different texture on the hit on the uh, on the on the gills. And then that shirt also another way to tell is it usually has the the metal vent tech shirt usually has the some um, catchphrase there and then the size. I wish they all had the size, but the Metal Vent Tech shirt does. This pair of 527 low rise boot cut Levi's has been one of my favorite jeans to sell for a long time, but um, everyone's listing them now. And I used to be able to sell a modern pair for $45 plus shipping a couple months ago maybe six months ago. And uh, after I started talking about it all the time and uh, the going rate for me is about $26.88. So, and my sell through rate went through the floor. But you know, I think I helped some people out. A lot of people left comments. I'm making tons of money on selling Levi's now. Thank you. So, you know, I took a sacrifice for the team. Um, now I gotta try to figure out another secret thing to sell. Here's a very old vintage Converse shirt. Smells old. It's like dead stock, it's perfect condition. It's nothing cool or interesting, but just by the age of the tag, I was like, ah, oh, I gotta get that. Like, this isn't 90s, this has to be at least 80s because this is some, it's like a slim fit polyester shirt. Single stitch and has like a little embroidery on the sleeve. It's not that cool. I don't think it's worth anything. I just never seen a Converse tag that old. So I was like, I gotta get it. Just to, I, Sometimes you just get stuff just to kind of hold on to them for a minute and touch them. A couple James Purse shirts. This particular Goodwill likes to put huge holes. Hey, it looks like it disappeared, the big old hole. For their tags, when they put in their tags, they put in some pretty big holes sometimes. Let's see. Yeah, like this guy. See that? That's annoying. I don't know. These shirts probably like 18 bucks or something like that. I haven't uh, done research on them in a while. Here's a pair of Patagonia pants. They're like a big size. Maybe they're, they're 2XL. They're a jogger. They're cotton. Kind of like a heavy cotton. Um, I don't know, I gotta look up the style. These are the old dusty hat, can look it up. Uh, five, six, seven, seven, five. Five, six, seven, seven, five. Are those good? Here is a pair of True Spec military style pants. These aren't, True Spec, True Spec makes uh, stuff that are true to the specifications of military garments, but um, I don't know if they actually sell to the military. This, I can't get this belt off. I tried for about 10 minutes. It's like, got these weird things that are jammed. I tried squeezing them, I tried everything. There's this thing I can flip. So I, I, yeah, the belt's broken, so we're gonna toss the belt. 
Usually if there's a big belt on something, well back in the day when shipping was more expensive for big things, like if it was a pair of shorts, like an Abercrombie pair of shorts with a big belt, I'd just toss the belt. But now I'd probably just ship out the belt too. Just for a little added value. These are like a ripoff of Multicam. Or OCP. Or Scorpion Camo. All our names for very similar camos. This is for Oakley Camo. Kind of like, like, like a fishing short. Like stretchy, hybrid, ripstop. I've sold these same exact shorts before for about 35 bucks. I don't pick up that much Oakley. Um, if you're into vintage stuff, the Oakley software stuff is really good. It'll actually say software on the tag. Like software, like computer software, but it's software because it's the clothing. It's like a clever little name they had in the early 2000s or late 90s. Here's a really cool, Woolrich vest. Oh, someone knocked on my door. Hold on, let me go peek through this window. I don't know, probably just a delivery guy or something. Someone coming to kill me. Cool vintage wool, wool rich vest made in, where is it made? Where is it made? I don't know where it's made. But this is an old ass vest. Um, it's, it's down filled. The coolest part is on the back waistband. It's got the logo. I don't love the uh, leaf kind of stitching pattern, but oh, look at the buttons. I love the old buttons. I think Woolrich, I've sold a couple of these. Similar vests. I think they make the coolest vests. You can tell it's old too by the collar, how it's so wide. That's like a 70s or Maybe 80s, probably 70s kind of style. It's got that cool logo there. Ugh, I gotta suck in to get into it though. Pretty cool. Um, we have a pop icon. They make kind of like rave disco type shirts. They sell really well for like 45 bucks. This one is unfortunately missing a button, which I realized last night when I was buttoning the buttons. A pro tip, when you're waiting in line, if there's a long line at the thrift, just button all the buttons. And usually when you button the buttons, that's when you see the stains, because most people's stains are dripping from their mouth up here, dripping down into the button line. So while you're buttoning the buttons, you're gonna see the stains, you're gonna see if it's missing the buttons, you're gonna see the back of the collar if that's all messed up. So button the buttons, if you can, while you're in line. You're also saving time because now you don't have to do it when you get home. Pair of Patagonia hiking shorts, kind of like a uh, hybrid short, stretchy, something. Right now, probably like 30 bucks. Here's an RLX, a golf pullover, performance stretchy shirt thing. This one has USA 2020, USA Cup, USA something. It's got a lot, not a lot. Uh, it's got a lot of little USA details, like there's a little star right there on the cuffs. It says "United We Stand." It's got this. I think I don't know. It either sucks or it's really good. RLX outerwear. Usually it's pretty good for me. Got a pair of 501s and a 3332 and it's a color black. Beautiful. I'd imagine the sell through on those is pretty high. We have an L.L. Bean chamois cloth shirt, but this one's cool because it's a pullover. I've never seen one that was a pullover before. 
Are you able to see that? So that's pretty interesting. Usually these uh, chamois cloth shirts, did I say chamois earlier? They're, it's pronounced chamois. The chamois cloth shirts I usually get like 20, 25 bucks for. Sometimes in the winter you could pull off 30 bucks. Here's a pair of uh, Prana. I'm thinking these are Zion pants because of the pocket. The little belt thing got kind of twisted here. I don't think that's a big deal, but these pants, the most common wear, it's gonna be the butt stitching. And then whatever fabric they make these out of, it gets a lot of snags on it. So be looking out for snags. No snags on those. Pair of 505s and a 3232. My favorite size. A little bit of fraying on the back pocket there. I'm thinking about getting a sewing machine and learning how to sew. Thinking about it. Well, I have a lot of abandoned hobbies already. So I don't know if I need another one. 32, 32, another 505. Nothing great here. Those are like $25 items. Here's a 501, 34, 32. And you can tell by this back patch how it's kind of stiff and different color than it. They are vintage ones. They're made in USA. 2002. Wow. That might be the latest made in USA that I've ever found. I think I found 2001. I've definitely found 2000. I don't think I've ever found 2002. But you can usually tell when it's the woven that it's going to be like later 90s, early 2000s. Um, the little paper one's going to be earlier. We have an L.O. Bean. This is a really cool one too. It's an L.O. Bean wool jacket. Look at the pattern on it. Can you see that? It's got a really cool window pane pattern on it. I don't know, it's more of a check. Well, it's sort of a window pane, but it's really cool. I'm gonna try it on. The men's medium. It's got like a cool liner. If I had to guess, I'd say, I didn't look it up. I'd say I could probably get a hundred bucks for it. Being that it is wool. I don't know. I don't really love the style for myself though. Ugh. And for L.L. Bean, you can usually, uh, the item ID, it's gonna help you out figure out what it is. 500514. Old dusty hat, what is it? Five zero zero five one four. Am I wrong or am I right? Is it good? I don't know. Oh, and it's got it's got a logo right there too. Kind of hard to see. It's on the chest. I don't know. I don't like it a lot. But. Oh, we got a Hilly Hansen shirt, just like a kind of stretchy performance button up, camp style shirt with camp objects on it. Camp shirt's just a short sleeve button up. Pair of Fabletics pants. Real high sell through rate on Fabletics pants. These I think are the only pant. The only pant is a stretchy pant. Actually, these might not be the only pant because the only pant usually has a drawstring. And these don't have a drawstring. There might just be a different variation of the only pant. Here is a vintage Adidas shirt, made in USA. Just a basic tee. Really big size though, it's uh, what's well, an XL? This is a huge XL, you can't even see me. It's a 2XL for sure. Hugo Boss Polo, nothing special here. It's been really, really rough. Really, really, really rough at the thrifts. I've been taking days off. I've been trying to just relax while it's rough. If it's rough, 
Um, there's not much you can do. I mean, you can keep going out. I went to 10, well, I went to nine thrift stores, and then I went to the first thrift store a second time. I circled back at the end of the day. I still got nothing the second time. And yesterday is when I got all this crap. But it took me 10 thrift stores. 10. So, think about that. Sims 2XL fishing shirt. So people are like, oh, you found the best stuff there, Yumbo. It's like, do you have any idea how hard it is to find the best stuff? This is a good one, I think. I don't know. It's a Peter Millar jacket. It's quilted. I do know it's good. It's got to be good. It's quilted. It's kind of like almost a field type jacket. It's got the little waist adjusters here. It actually looks nicer on the inside than it does on the outside, which is a shame. Really shiny little buttons here. I'm really showing you the details today. Huh? Jesus, come on. Ah, oh, there we go. On the inside, it's got a nice fleece lining. And then like the pockets, you see that? They made the pocket exterior like wool. And the wool there. Look at that. That's wool. That's cool. I mean, it could, could be acrylic. Feels like wool though. Um, yeah, I just wish they would've just made the whole jacket wool. That'd probably be better. But, you know, it's probably at least a $50, $60 jacket with all its little details. It's a men's large. That is all I have to show for you. And uh, i just like to remind you at um, 11 a.m. Pacific time, go over to Caleb Sells channel, Caleb Sells. Um, subscribe, you know, turn on a little notification for that guy. I will be doing a live talk with him. So go over there. The K&M resale guy was on there last week and I'd like to have more people than him. Okay. So this is the competition. Thank you.